Hi there, everybody. My name is Lauren Spring, and I'm a teaching and learning consultant here with Conestoga College. This video is part of a series of short videos that my consultant colleagues and I are creating to help you, new faculty, navigate their ways through their first semesters of teaching with Conestoga. In this particular session together, we are going to focus on marking assignments in eConestoga. Now, it's important to point out that there's a bit of a separation. Anything teaching and learning related, um, any questions you may have about communicating with students, etc., uh, comes to myself and my colleagues. And you can see our email address is down here at the bottom, teaching and learning at conestogac.on.ca. Anything that's technically related to eConestoga about troubleshooting, um, you know, any, any of the features on there, uh, setting things up, etc. Those go to the very capable and wonderful folks at eConestoga. And their email address is here, eConestoga at conestogac.on.ca. They also have a handy drop-in session uh, that's offered several times every weekday. So I've just navigated here, you can see to the, um, their website. And then, um, for example, today, uh, if it were between 10 and 11 a.m. or 2 and 4 p.m., uh, this blue button would actually say, click here to join. And then you could just click on it and automatically be connected to folks via Zoom uh, who are there to help you from eConestoga. So any technical questions about eConestoga goes to them. When it comes to teaching and learning, uh, what we're gonna focus on in this session is the following. So with respect to marking assignments, first, we want to access student submissions. Of course, if you can't read the assignments, you can't grade them. So this is an important first step. We'll walk through how to review for non-submissions and then discuss sort of how and why to email students who didn't yet submit their assignments. We'll take a look at the way that rubrics are built into eConestoga as well and why it's important to review them before you offer feedback to students. And there's also a feature on eConestoga that many faculty find helpful that actually lets you mark in random order. That is to say that it uh, hides the names of students while you're grading. So you're not, you know, sort of unconsciously uh, maybe grading the best first and setting the bar high from the outset. So we'll discuss why some faculty find this helpful too. So let's pretend that I am teaching at Conestoga this semester and I am teaching this course. There we go. So college reading and writing. And now um, let's say that we're a few weeks into the term and I have my first assignment due this evening. So I've set a deadline for students of 10 p.m. tonight. So I want to just take a look. Let's say it's now four o'clock in the afternoon. I want to take a look and see how many students have submitted their work already. So I'll simply navigate over here to course tools, click on assignments, Scroll on down and here, this is the assignment that is due at 10 p.m. tonight. And so we can see here under the completed heading, uh, I have five out of my 10 students who've already submitted their work. Not too bad. Uh, the reason that this number here, new submissions is different than five is because I already logged on earlier this morning to take a look at who had submitted just to make sure things were working properly and students were able to submit. So I've already reviewed two of those assignments. And so that's why the new submissions is at three instead of five. Now let's say I wanted to see um, who actually had submitted their work, which students had submitted their work already. I'll just click on the assignment itself. Scroll on down, you can see there's five student names here. Just for your information, these are all fictional students. We're not betraying anybody's privacy here. Um, so yeah, five students and they've each submitted their first assignment. Uh, what I might want to do, if I have a bit of extra time this afternoon and I'm feeling generous, I might use this feature here. You can see it's a button that says send course mail to users without submissions. If I were to click on that, automatically an email would pop up that would BCC, it would blind copy all of the students in my class who hadn't yet submitted their work. And I might want to say something this afternoon like, uh, hello students, I hope this email finds you well. This is just a friendly reminder that assignment one is due tonight by 10 p.m. Uh, I'm really looking forward to reading your work. Have a great day. Something like that. Another way I might want to use this feature is, you know, typically after an assignment deadline comes and goes, 
you'll hear from students. Maybe some of them had something unexpected come up. Maybe some of them were struggling at the last minute and they just couldn't get it in on time. So they're likely to reach out to you in those cases and you can um, you know, discuss with them on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, but then maybe two or three days after the deadline had passed and there are still some students I hadn't heard from, I might use this feature again. I'd click here. And in that case, I might say something like, hello students, I hope you're doing well. Um, this is just a reminder email that assignment one was due at 10 p.m. two or three nights ago, and I've yet to receive your work. Please reach out to me if you have any concerns, otherwise I'm looking forward to reading it as soon as possible. Something like that. This just helps students know that you're aware that their work is outstanding and that you care too about why they've not submitted it yet. Let's take a look now at another assignment in my course. This is one that will be due a few weeks from now. I'll just scroll on down here to the portfolio task one, reading comprehension. Now, if I wanted to access the rubric for this assignment, I just click over here and scroll on down to edit assignment. And then you can see there's a few different categories. In this case, I want evaluation and feedback. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, anytime students submit work at Conestoga for evaluation, there must be a rubric attached. Students really do have to know the criteria that they're being graded on. That's only fair. In this particular case, um, the rubric is already built into Econestoga, so this makes my job easier. I would have, of course, reviewed it with students before um, they actually submit their work, so they really have a deep understanding of the criteria. And you can see here that there's a few different categories. We've got question one, which is topic, then thesis, two purposes, support, voice, and title. Um, so for a total out of 10. And within each of this, these criteria, there's three different options. So students might demonstrate comprehension, they might struggle to demonstrate comprehension, or they might not demonstrate comprehension. So as I'm reading through student work in this case, um, you know, with uh, associated to each criteria, I would just check on the right box um, according to what they had submitted. There's another handy feature built into this evaluation um, section as well. And this is this possibility for anonymous marking. Now, in spite of our best efforts, we do know research shows that unconscious bias often exists. And it can be challenging um, when you're grading students' work and you see a, a particular name pop up that you might automatically associate them as being a very strong student or a student who produces weaker work. So um, a lot of faculty members find it helpful to use this feature. You just click on this button. Um, you do have to do it before assignments start rolling in. So uh, well before the deadline. Um, that's why I couldn't show it to you on the assignment that my students have due later this evening because some had already submitted their work. So it was too late in that case for me to, to anonymize um, their names. But you can do it in advance. And that just means that when you're scrolling through and grading work, there won't be any names associated with them. And they're gonna be in a sort of random order, not alphabetical. Um, in addition to this short video, I also will link below to two different hub posts uh, written by my colleagues that uh, also address some of these related topics. So the first one is about different feedback delivery options. Of course, for some assignments, um, in addition to grading according to the rubric, you might also offer pretty significant written feedback. You know, this might take the form of comment boxes on a Microsoft Word document that students have submitted. Um, uh, in other cases, you might only be, you know, using the, the rubric that's built in. So there's some interesting discussion here in this particular post about how and why and when to use different types of feedback for students. And then we do have a post that goes a little bit more deeply into how to avoid bias when grading. And we do know that this is important. So I hope this video has been helpful and um, that it's been a key part of your pathways of navigating your way through your first semesters of teaching here. And I wish you happy grading.